of an AIM EVO 4 with a GT320 steering wheel with the infrared tire temperature sensor kit installed. I'll go on and ahead and power on the unit. So you can see it going through its startup sequence there. Showing the firmware number, the serial number, and then it will come to this uh, screen here that that was the last screen that was on prior to shutting it off. We can just cycle through the screens here quickly. This would be your home screen with the um, gear indicator, a bar graph for engine RPM, your GPS speed. We're currently indoors so the GPS satellite reception is, is low. Uh, battery voltage and live lap times with a lap indicator. These alarm lights that are currently being shown are for, if we scroll to this page here, this is showing um, the live infrared temperature reading from this array of temp sensors here. Um, this, these are values in degrees centigrade. So if I just put my uh, hand in front of the first sensor here, you can see that uh, left front tire being the first sensor, um, right front, um, left rear and right rear, um, sensors one through four. So the alarms are configured that underneath 30 degrees Celsius, it's the tire is cold. And then if I put my body in front of it, obviously this light will get uh, turned from blue to cyan, uh, meaning that the tire is now cool, not cold, but cool. Um, so I can go between um, in front of sensor one here. I can go in front of sensor two, in front of sensor three, and sensor four. And you can see how it responds to my body temperature there um, quite quickly. Um, the field of view of these is, is catered towards um, uh, mounting and installation for uh, open wheel circuit cars um, uh, with rubber tires, obviously. Um, so if I just put my hand in front of all of them, you can see how they all respond there. If I hold my hand in front of all of them. So now I have a, um, a uh, just a simple uh, iron here that I can simulate um, even higher temperatures. So once the tire gets to um, 60 degrees Celsius is considered warm and then uh, 90 degrees Celsius would be considered overheating. So if I go in front of sensor one here, you can see it warming up and then left front tire overheat if I go above 90 there. So if I go in front of sensor two, you can see obviously that one is overheating, right front tire, sensor three, and you can see the, the alarm lights go between blue, cyan, green being the optimum tire operating range, and then uh, red would be an overheat condition. Now these sensors read between um, negative 20 degrees centigrade and 120 degrees centigrade. And if I go obviously sensor four, I can overheat that sensor as well. So this shows obviously a visual representation of um, each of the four corner, um, the tire operating temperature while you're uh, racing around the, the track. Um, the way that this is connected is via a, uh, a data hub and a channel expansion, as you can see here. Um, just a simple analog channel expansion with these IR temp sensors and the EVO 4. This particular EVO 4 has been configured for um, K-line communication um, via the ECU for Subaru applications. So if we scroll back here to the home screen. If we give the, the unit a second, it will start displaying the live values. Um, once again, we can still see all four corners being cold, still displaying if um, the live alarms, if I put my hands in front of it, despite not being in that screen. I'll scroll ahead to the next screen. We're not currently connected to an ECU, but uh, via this OBD2 port, we can connect uh, via KNL line um, using a simple uh, OBD2 connection to um, the CAN expansion port on, um, or the ECU connection port on the, the EVO 4. So you can see some some values here. We're not currently connected to a vehicle, but throttle position, engine coolant temperature, um, turbo boost pressure, ignition timing. If we scroll ahead to the next screen, you can see the VVTL or variable valve timing on the, the left bank and then the right bank. Since it's a boxer motor, there's two banks. Um, the knock correction for the ignition timing and then the throttle position sensor. And then back to the screen that's showing the live values for the tire temp sensors. 
So now scrolling through the menu items on the the GT320 steering wheel, we can uh, set up the display here right here on the device. So we can turn the backlight off and on. We can actually change uh, the backlight brightness. Um, we can go through the LED intensity. Um, so we can increment or decrement that. So you can see here the all LED lights illuminated. So there's four alarm LEDs and then there is this array of um, shift light LEDs at the top of um, the wheel here. And then there is two horn buttons here and then an array of four auxiliary um, um, buttons or switches here that you can operate other things on the vehicle. Um, and then the four down here that operate um, the menu and the scrolling features and the memory. Um, so I will increment that back to where it was. Click OK, it will save those changes. Um, we can actually set up a few, a few of the pages here right on the device. Um, so you, the RPM and lap time page is enabled. You can also do this in Race Studio 2 software. So I go back. Um, you can also set up the, the recall page um, to show lap and RPM screen, lap and speed screen, or lap histogram. Go back. Um, so after you um, pass by the, the GPS lap beacon or an IR beacon, you can visualize the lap time that it's going to show you for a predetermined amount of time here. So right now that's configured to show the lap time once you pass the start finish line for eight seconds. And then you can auto hide or um, permanently show this um, array of uh, keyboard keys or effectively um, menu items on the bottom of the, the screen here. So I'll go back um, and then you can set your date and time for your time zone and then your, your time format. Um, you can go through and look, look at your current um, hour meter and uh, mileage for or an array of different um, sessions or engines or however you want to configure it but currently this particular device is 740 miles on it and then you can see um, four different individual hour meters that have all been reset to zero if i go back you can clear the system uh the, the memory uh, of the device or the system test data and you can go through the system management and show um, a few more items here so you can see the device info for system um, information so these are the two devices here that are uh, connected so an evo 4 with the serial number and then the steering wheel with the serial number and it shows the firmware version of each of these um, and you can go through and actually select um, the net device so these are the can um, expansions that are currently connected to the Evo 4. So as, as I mentioned, we have a channel expansion um, and the, the GT320 steering wheel and it shows the serial number for both of those. Um, so the mathematical uh, gear calculation based procedure that this is using to display the gear number numerically on the home screen, um, you can restart that procedure and manually recalibrate it if you change the tire size or change vehicles for which the device is uh, currently installed in. You can also create a new GPS trap uh, track um, by setting a start finish beacon um, at a certain location. Uh, currently we're indoors so we don't have GPS reception so we won't be able to do this but if I select that it's going to allow you here to select when you are passing the start finish line. You can select that point um, that uh, those geographical coordinates will be stored and then that's what it's going to use as your imaginary start finish line. Um, and then obviously you can change the language of um, the the syntax that's displayed on the screen here. Um, finally, we'll go back to the home screen here and we will click um, the memory item here, which will allow you to review any log sessions um, within that are stored within the device's memory. Currently, we don't have any, but obviously you can look at the, the peaks of um, certain channels on the device here directly and each individual lap time um, for, for a variety of different sessions and a variety of different days. Um, you can also download the data via the provided USB cable to um, Ray Studio 2 using that software, and then you can use Ray Studio Analysis um, to actually post-process and analyze the data. Um, other than that, it's a great working system for an open-wheel uh, vehicle, um, time attack cars, um, uh, even even supercars or things like that. Um, the D bottom or the D shaped wheel with the flat bottom is a nice aesthetic touch and um, it has five analog inputs additional to um, what these uh, IR temp sensors are already using because this is uh, expanded via channel expansion. 
there's five more dedicated inputs um, that you can uh, use to uh, process or um, input any any analog signal um, between zero and five volts. And that that was a summary of the features and uh, a general overview of this AIM Evo 4 uh, data logger system with GT320 steering wheel and um, an IR temp sensor kit.